to Denise, thank you so much for Denise Ho becoming the song. Um, now I, I truly, truly understand, you know, the title and what that means. Let's start with uh, Sue and Denise, how you both met and how you decided that, you know, we'll make a documentary out of this mega life, this mega life of Denise Ho. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go first, Sue? Okay. <laughs> um, well, I've worked for many years in China and spent a lot of time in Hong Kong City, a great, great international city, very dear to my heart. And a mutual friend introduced us a couple of years ago. I think it was like the summer of 2017. Yeah. And she, and she knew about my work and my films. And I hadn't really heard of Denise. And Denise certainly didn't know who I was. And we were introduced. And that was how we met. <clears throat> and then um, we spent a little time getting to know each other. I actually went to Hong Kong, spent a few days went to London to see you perform and, um, and she very kindly and generously said, okay. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and that's when we started, um, you know, her story is so amazing. I'm, I'm just going to say this now. I'm so honored to have done this film because her story is, you know, one of artistry and courage, and that's so rare in the world today that um, for me, it was a no brainer. <laughs> I think it's well, fun that I'm, you I'm, met, uh, you know, Denise, you were already in uh, performing as an independent. We already knew of uh, the blacklisting and, and the, the things, the challenges that you had faced by being a, you know, an outspoken um, artist. And so, for you to decide that, well, let's go all the way back from, you know, be, uh, uh, the journey of becoming a mega canto pop star to this big political activist, and not just just big, but even thinking about it in this modern time. I mean, to to really show some of this footage, some of the modern footage uh, that includes what I, in my opinion, are, and I think many of us who have seen the film, like very dangerous, and so. I think you had said it before the interview start. I mean, it's like everything that happened that was bad has already happened. So you, you, you know, putting this out into the world must have meant something big for you. Well, yes. I mean, um, you know, interestingly, when we met in 2017, um, nothing much was happening at that time. You know, we were in between the umbrella days of 2014, you know, the umbrella movement. And then um, at that year, it was um, you know it was pretty quiet in Hong Kong because um, uh, you know the the movements died down a bit, and then uh, the 2019 movement did not happen yet. So uh, when you know our our mutual friend uh, she suggested that you know maybe we should uh, have this collaboration, I was. Honestly, a little bit, um, you know, uncertain, you know, about you know what can be said about myself because for to me, I'm just you know really just a, a singer songwriter who chose to uh, you know stand stand up and to speak my mind. And that's you know simply put, that's what's happened, um, you know, in my opinion. So uh, you know, there's nothing extraordinary about that. Um, supposedly it shouldn't it shouldn't be anything crazy you know just speaking your mind but you know it is a very crazy time so somehow uh you know me doing that it's um you know it might be something that is worth documenting um given you know that we are in these very historic times um so you know i i'm so glad that we did this me and sue uh, you know, she spent a lot of time coming to Hong Kong and then chasing me around the world uh, <laughs> because, uh, you know, we actually thought that the film um, would end uh, at the, around the end of 2018, I think. You know, she came to Hong Kong and then she shot this whole concert festival of mine and then she's like, okay, that's it, we're done. And then 2019 happened. So she had to come to Hong Kong again, and then, you know, 
in Geneva and so on. Like we had to <laughs> continue on for for all this extra month. Um, but you know, I I guess that was um, what was meant to be. Yeah. Could I add one thing here? When I, when I started making the film, I think one thing that really interested me, as Denise said, it was sort of a quiet time in her life. Yeah. I was really interested in how an artist who is banned by China can have a career. I, I think, you know, <laughs> how does someone who is censored that mm -hmm. severely have a, have a career? And, and so for me, it was also an artistic question. It's like, how does, how will she deal with this and how does she deal with it? And we can talk more about that if you want, but that was, you know, it was gonna be a film about her as a musician and writing music and doing concerts. And, and of course, as Denise said, history events overtook us. <laughs> well, you know, uh, that, that is one of my questions. So hold that thought, but uh, the, your, both of your relationship had to have been in sync this entire time. I would imagine that when you're, especially for, for you, Sue, when you're telling the story of someone um, who's just as, as passionate for social justice and you know, uh, unfair treatment and speaking out for freedom, that you've got to have a core foundation, I guess, in, in my opinion, like that, that storytelling has to come alive because even as a filmmaker, you believe in it, um, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I, I've thought about this a lot um, the last few months, um, especially as I hear, well, obviously freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, those are fundamental rights. and I. What the way China has framed the narrative? I'm I'm not going to talk about the whole terrible situation in America and everywhere else. Just in Hong Kong, words matter, and people say Hong Kong has special privileges, which were agreed upon between the British and the Chinese in 1997. They're not special privileges anywhere except for in China. Their respect for the rule of law, their freedom of speech, the right to peaceful assembly. These aren't special things. They're just things that in most democratic societies we, we still take for granted. And it's hard to give them up. It's really hard to be told no. You, you. And so I think you have to look at what's happening in Hong Kong through that lens people don't give up their freedoms easily. They don't want to. And so that um, was something that ha has, has been very meaningful to me in making this film, is, is to document the incredible ingenuity and courage of the Hong Kong people this last year. Denise, do you want to add to uh, you know, how, how strong of a bond that you had to have with, with someone who's documenting you? And uh, to Sue's point, you know, she may have thought about this and following you as an artist and then at the tail end, especially continue to cover your activism. Um, and as things escalated in Hong Kong, uh, you know, if it, what your, your relationship was like, did it just get stronger and stronger and stronger throughout the project? Well, you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that Sue took the time to, um, try to understand all my lyrics because <laughs> um, you know, that was a monumental task for her given that she does not speak um, Cantonese at all <laughs> and so uh, you know I remember we had to spend uh, you know she spent a lot of time uh, finding people to translate it and then finally I did some of the translation um, and then you know, it, it, and you see that the language is, you know, um, the the importance of language, you know, in in uh, in arts and music, because there actually are some expressions that are untranslatable. So, um, you know, I could only imagine how difficult it was for Xu um, to understand that, you know, first of all, and then also given the distance uh, between us, um, you know, although she, you know, she did had a few trips coming over um, and then shooting some of my shows but still you know in some of the very critical moments it was impossible for her to you know to fly over to Hong Kong immediately so uh, I think our trust sort of 
um, gradually, you know, um, uh, was built upon, you know, uh, how, you know, I had to trust her to, um, to, to, to relate to my songs. And then she had to trust me to, you know, to document my side of things, um, truthfully. And, uh, so, you know, also given this, the, all these things that happened, you know, um, uh, June from last year, the, the million people marches in Hong Kong, and then, uh, you know, me being, uh, you know, confronting the police, and then, you know, she had to try to keep up with, you know, what's happening on our side, because it was you know, so high speed at that time, and, you know, me being attacked in Taiwan, and so on, so um, I think, um, you know, somehow I I feel, uh, you know, we have this very special bond between us. Although, you know, we, we haven't talked that much these few months, but I think, um, you know, the, the two years that we spent, um, you know, back and forth uh, trying to put all this together, um, you know, it's, it's a really, really special um, journey for myself, I think. Um, and I, and I think, you know, in these times where we have a lot of censorship, uh, a lot of reality is twisted and, um, uh, you know, modified, uh, it's very important that we have, you know, uh, film and, uh, documentaries to, to, um, to record this truth, you know, that is, that could easily be, be erased, you know, from, uh, all those archives that are controlled by the the authoritarian governments. So, um, you know, I, I I can't thank Sue enough for doing this. You know, spending two years, <laughs> three so years, two <laughs> years, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah. So I, you know, I I do hope that uh, you know this this is this is really not only my story. You know, I I I believe you know it gradually morphed into this story of Hong Kong, um, seen through my own, you know, my own story. And, uh, and it translates to, you know, the story of all these people who are all fighting for uh, the freedom that you know, we're trying to preserve in Hong Kong. The, there's a scene, I think for many of us, uh, you've just seen the film, you talk about, you know, the price you, you pay. And as a, a viewer, we, we, we know exactly what you're talking about, even though you're not outright saying it, you know, the price you pay, the price you pay for freedom, the price you pay to be yourself, uh, to be an artist. And um, it, you, you, when you see the entirety of the film, it's almost like it's a natural progression for you to be to be you today, to be, uh, or becoming, you know, the song and never giving up, even transforming your vulnerable moments, you know, into strength, it, it, not being afraid uh, to show your fear and your pain when you're even performing. And I found that to be so, so powerful. It even, you know, made, made me as a person who's watching, watching you on the, on the screen want to join you, want to join you, you know, at the front lines of the, the protest, want to join you in fighting for um, democracy. Uh, but was there any moment that you, you wanted to give up? I mean, that you said, you know, this, the, the price is too, too high. Uh, and then the question could be the same for Sue and, you know, some of the scenes that were included, especially towards the end and witnessing the police brutality, um, that was, you know, very scary but, uh, that I, I thought in my mind, like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it, it, you'd be saying too much. If you're saying too much, maybe we, sh we should be quiet if there is a, a higher power. But I'll let you both, you know, yeah, discuss. Denise, we'll start with you. Well, these moments of vulnerability, I think they, they come in waves, you know. They, they come and then they go and then you you try to overcome them and then you do overcome them and then you think okay i'm fine now but then they come again so i think what i have learned during these years um is that you know i i try to embrace this vulnerable side of myself 
because um, it's it's very easy to you know to um, to indulge in this sort of uh, you know I'm very strong and then you know there's nothing that can beat me down this sort of mentality but then um, you know we are we are all still very human and uh, I would be lying if I I'm, I said that you know I, I'm never scared of anything you know it, that that's just not possible because given the the um, the scale of things you know that that escalated you know the, the national security law that came these two months um, I think nobody would have expected uh, things to turn uh, so quickly you know into 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 this um, this level of um, uh, severity in Hong Kong so um, you know when I when I rethink of the days you know the umbrella days where you know we could relatively uh, be safer you know or, or where even when I were on the streets I I could still be safe you know physically safe um, you know I might be banned I might be blacklisted but still I, I I wouldn't be afraid that you know some police force would come and you know beat everybody down and you know people would be kidnapped and then you know, would just disappear and then just reappear on on uh, you know Chinese national television so um, within only six years things have changed to really another um, uh, to another level so um, you know I when you see you know a lot of your friends being arrested and then some of them being followed around by you know strange and suspicious uh, cars and then uh, the way that the the Hong Kong government they are trying to to suppress and to silence everyone you know you that thought of you know I must be next you know that that's just always a present you know in, in my mind but then um, you know I draw my courage from all these young people who are in the front lines who are really you know they are really amazing I, I just can't understand you know where does this courage come from when I, I remember there's this one night um, last year in July uh, where I you know it was one of those night those nights where you know tear gas and rubber bullets were flying around and then um, it was pretty late into the night and then there was this small crowd group of uh, young you know young people black clad dressed in black and they were you know holding these foam swimming boards on their arms and then some of them were uh, cardboard boxes with water makeshift you know shield basically and then they were just running into the front lines you know to confront the police um, just so that the people in the back they could uh, they could leave so, you know, because I, I remember I was, you know, I, I was sort of trembling a little bit when, when I heard all these, you know, the bullets being fired, you know, it's just not something that you, 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 you experience in Hong Kong. But then those kids, they were just running into the front and without a second thought. So, um, you know, that, that's an, an image that I would never forget. And, uh, you know, whenever I feel vulnerable or scared or worried about you know what might happen to myself I would just think about all these all these young people who have been arrested who have been beaten up who have who are going through trial and you know some probably even um, you know who've, who've been killed basically uh, so you know, this is something that we are going through together so uh, you know I'm, I'm glad that I, I have these people uh, although I might not know them but I, I'm glad that I I am with I am with them and um, you know I try to give them my energy when I have that and you know when I don't have it I I will look to them to you know draw this courage from them It's so interesting, Denise, um, in the protests in New York, I don't know about other cities across the country, but people, the young people have learned from the young people in Hong Kong, they're using the phrase, be water. And 
Yeah, and I saw that um, the leaf blowers. There were there were some people who who were holding the leaf blowers because uh, there was this one night where a, a man in Hong Kong he was holding the leaf blower and he was trying to disperse the tear gas and that that sort of happened in 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 the states too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's had a a big impact on young people around the world. Right. Same question to you, Sue. I mean, you know, over a time when you're working on the, the project, the film, that, um, <clears throat> you know, that sometimes, like, when we are creating art with a purpose and we're trying to tell the story, you know that somebody wants to silence that story and you're a part of it, do, do you ever feel like you're giving up? That, 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 that the, the cost could be, you know, costly to you, too? Um, <clears throat> you know, every film's hard. This film had its own challenges, um, distance, uh, um, lots of issues. Lo I mean, lo there are always lots of issues. Um, but I never, and I've had sort of hints of intimidation come my way, but nothing um, like, I mean, when you look at what Denise and people in Hong Kong are facing, it's, uh, no, I never thought of, backing away or, or wanting to self-censor. In fact, I probably would have pushed harder with the film um, if I hadn't been concerned about Denise, who I am very concerned about. Um, I'm concerned about everyone who's outspoken and speaks their truth in Hong Kong. Um, so no, there were, um, you know, just from a filmmaking point of view, when the protests broke out, last summer and I realized we couldn't, you know, we had to wait to see what happened. And then that date kind of getting, kept getting postponed and postponed <laughs> and postponed and postponed until Denise came to New York in the middle of October. And by then we were so over budget <laughs> and just, it's like, we have to stop. So we, I just said, that's it. Having, so it was almost a year after I told Denise we were, we were done that <laughs> we were done. Yeah. And, People kept sending me stuff and saying, you've got to use this. And I kept saying, no, we have to stop. <laughs> um, and then, um, you know, we were really fine cutting at that point, sort of December, January. And, um, and I was really frantic to finish the film because of cost and everything else. And when, when I heard about the virus in China and I heard they'd locked Wuhan down, I, I thought, I, thank you, Xi Jinping. He would only do something like that if it was really terrible. And then we were just, we just worked 24 seven for several weeks to finish the film. And we, we finished on like March 2nd and I closed my office on the Monday. And um, so there was lots of drama and intensity, but nothing in comparison to what Denise has been going through. And uh, I hope this film. I hope this film is good for her, and I hope it's good for the people of Hong Kong. So, I, I definitely think so. I mean, even for myself, I'm not in Hong Kong. Um, had certainly, you know, read about it, but as a as a queer woman of color, um, pro democracy, and in support of, you know, Hong Kong. Um, I, you know, Denise, you're you're a you're such a a, an inspiration and for many of us who are LGBTQ um, and when the identities start to impact you and uh, you feel all these oppressions you, you you do tell yourself that you can't and watching your story and you reinvent yourself uh, time after time and, and time again and there was nothing stopping you and we don't have enough Denise's out there in the world and so I think it's so special that the film, you know, premiered during Pride Month and at a, uh, an LGBTQ, you know, film festival. And so if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, the importance of the timing uh, for, for both of you, um, Denise. Well, I mean, though me coming out in 2012, um, that was, a decision that really changed my whole journey, basically. Um, you know, to just to give some con uh, 
some background to 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 the audience. Um, you know, I I was never um, how should I put that? You know, it, it was never really a secret <laughs> uh, in Hong Kong. You know, people assume that um, you know I I I'm I'm gay, um, but I never admitted to it you know, before t- 2012. You know, I had songs, I had, um, you know, I had rumors going around, <laughs> uh, which people were very curious about. But then I never felt the need to, you know, to 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 announce to people, you know, my my sexual orientation because I thought that was, you know, very private and not something that I would want to. Uh, to, to, to do to satisfy the curiosity of you know the paparazzi or so on. But then in 2012, um, you know, a news came out from the LegCo, you know, the Legislative Council in Hong Kong, um, you know, saying that um, the LegCo denied this um, this decision of you know to, to ask asking the, the government to make a public survey you know, about how people in Hong Kong felt about, you know, these LGBTQ issues. And then that, even just that, you know, not even same-sex marriage, not even any sort of gay rights, it's only a survey that was denied in 2012. So I was so angry. I was like, how can this happen, you know, in in this era of time? And so um, I decided to come out. And um, before coming out, I was, I was um, I was not sure what would happen with my career in China. <laughs> um, yeah, ironically, um, I was a little bit worried because I I still had shows going on in China back then, and but still, you know, I went on went on with the decision, and then surprisingly, nothing happened. You know. I could still go into China. I was still, you know, I, I was still, actually it, it went even better, you know, honestly. Um, and so at that time, me and um, Anthony Wong, another, uh, my, my very good friend in Hong Kong, also a gay, um, openly gay singer, uh, we thought that things were getting better in China, you know, in those few years. But then uh, 2014 happened, and uh, you know that was when things started to escalate. And you know this whole mural of um, this false pretense of you know the the upholding of the one country two system um, just crumbled. And um, so the the reason I said that you know I think my decision of coming out is the best decision that I ever made is because if I did not come out in 2012, I probably would have been um, a little bit more cautious with what I, you know, how I positioned myself in 2014 in the Umbrella Movement. I probably would still have uh, you know, chosen to, 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 to go with the people, but then, you know, there would still be something that I was sort of hiding from the public, and you know, I I I, I wouldn't be able to be that open uh, and that honest uh, to the general public. So uh, having done that, you know, have having uh, made that decision to come out, um, basically I had no black material on on the in the hands of the the enemy so-called. Uh, and so, you know, being you know, totally open uh, with myself and, you know, the, the relationship between me and the public just was, um, it was just great, you know, because I think, you know, the people in Hong Kong, they are not used to having celebrities and, uh, you know, singers, actors being that, you um, honest basically you know they they were used to you know um all these superstars and movie stars being you know having this this sort of uh um idol you know packaging and so um you know that that was 
actually very refreshing for myself and also probably for the for the public too. So um, no, I'm glad that I did that, and you know, hopefully, having made that decision, you know, that also gave uh, some encouragement to other LGBTQ um, you know, young people, especially. You know, I think uh, you know, in 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 our community, it's 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 getting better, but still, you know, there are all these. Um, uh, we are still a very conservative com community, I, I think, in Hong Kong. And so uh, we still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll and, tell yeah. you, that it was really exciting to see the scene of when you could, did come out and then you performed at uh, Hong Kong Pride. That was, that, that was just yeah. so, that was so special. So I've, I've got the warning and I'm so sad because I could sit here all day and, and talk to both of you. And thank you so oh. much for, the, for Denise Ho becoming the song. I think yep. everyone in the world should see it. So my last question uh, for both of you, and we've got about five minutes, I'm told, um, is really, you know, again, this is timely, the, the timing of the premiere um, and your story of being a, an artist um, fighting for, you know, freedom of speech and expression. And there is a movement going on. And so last words on, you know, what you hope people get out of hearing your story, seeing your story, knowing about you and your activism. And then Sue, you know, the film that you've put, you've put together. Um, so we'll start with you Sue and, and, and with Denise, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry. Well, first of all, um, people are gonna get to know Denise and that's, That'll be really great. Um, she's, you know, I didn't know about her and so many people don't know about her and should know about her and listen to her music and, and read the, you know, get to know the lyrics. Um, but I think the bigger thing is, is the courage of the individual. You know, when I was making the film, and I spoke to a lot of people who Denise had worked with and were called professional colleagues. None of them would appear on camera. They were all afraid because Denise had been blacklisted. And we have to have, we have to, I mean, authoritarianism seems to be expanding exponentially around the world. And we have a president who would be as authoritarian as any dictator in the world if he could be, and he's trying to be. And so we have to see what happens when people are intimidated and they don't speak out and they don't live their truth. And Denise is just this wonderful example of it and it's wrapped up in great music and a little bit of glamor and a little bit of paparazzi. And so I think it's, a, it's an easy way for people to kind of connect to actually a much more serious, issue, which is defending our rights, whatever they are, whether you're gay, straight, queer, black, Asian, whatever you are, try and have the courage to speak your truth and get out on the street while you can and make your truth heard. I hope that's what people take away from this film. So, Denise, over to you. <laughs> well, I'm really glad that this movie turned out into not only a film about me but really a film about Hong Kong um, the story of Hong Kong people and also the story about you know these um, people who are fighting for the freedoms and also for our home and um, you know I think my flexibility um, it probably came from you know, this whole background of you know, having the Hong Kong culture and also me having been, you know, uh, having this Western education in Canada, all this mixed together, you know, the, the best of both worlds, I would say. And, um, and that's how I think, um, myself and also Hong Kong, we became so resilient um, to all the suppression and you know, all these intimidation. Um, 
and that's how we do it. You know, be water, be water. The 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 philosophy of being water is that you know you just adapt to any sort of situation that is thrown towards you. Um, sometimes you fight it. Sometimes you go with that flow, and that is how you know you not only survive but you thrive in the in these very difficult situations. Um, That's hard. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> you make it sound but so we easy. Did it. No, we <laughs> Hong in Hong Kong last year. It was a very difficult six months. Um, but I think that those were these six months that changed Hong Kong forever. You know, this generation of Hong Kong people, these young people, they are just so lovable. <laughs> and, you know, the way that, the way that they can adapt to any situation, you know, that is something that could inspire any, any person um, who is facing very similar situations anywhere in the world. And as Sue said just now, you know, I, I think that we are in this, um, in these times where authoritarian governments, author dictators are trying um, to destroy all these um, things that were built upon these few decades and you know, we are on that very edge where, you know, I, we go either this way or the other way. And so uh, luckily we, we are also in this era where, you know, the, there is this sort of decentralization with um, a intelligent use of the internet. If we can use it, use it, um, you know, to our advantage, I think there is a lot of uh, power in the hands of the people. And so, you know, if this were, all these things were to happen 20, 30 years ago, maybe the result and the, you know, the, the whole situation would be very different. Maybe the authoritarian uh, government or the dictatorships, they would win. But no, right now, in these times, who knows, you know, who knows? who would survive in the end. And, you know, personally, I have uh, immense hope and, um, you know, belief and faith in people, you know, just people. Uh, I think we have that power and uh, we should use it to change whatever that we feel that we have to change. Power to the people. Thank you so much to both of you for Denise you. becoming the song. And thanks to all of you for joining us for Frameline 44. Happy Pride. Thank Happy you. Pride.